Okay, so daratumumab is given weekly for the first eight weeks. We can give that um, as, a, as a single agent or in combinations. When we give it in combination, we're giving it usually with Revdex or we can give it with Velcadex. So it's given weekly for the first eight weeks and then we give it every other week till week 25 and then we start giving it monthly. At our center, when we're scheduling that first appointment for a monoclonal antibody, we want our patient in the infusion chair first thing in the morning. It's a long day for that first dose, uh, especially daratumumab. And so we typically start about 7.30 in the morning. Um, our timing is different at our various infusion centers. We have five different infusion centers. But depending on the, if the patient has a reaction, they might need that entire day. And so when we first started using DARA, it was on clinical trials where you also had PK levels afterwards. So there was this thought that, oh, it just takes forever. And I think there was a little leeriness from our nurses in how long it was going to take to give. But Typically, we can get that first dose in in about 10 hours, even if, if the patient's having a reaction, and that's with daratumumab, and that's more common with daratumumab. For subsequent infusions, it really, right now at our centers, we're scheduling a five-hour infusion for daratumumab, but it really only takes about three and a half hours to get at that point. For elotuzumab, it takes um, about two hours, and if they have it on the uh, faster route. It can take only an hour, but you have to have time for labs to get the labs back and pre-medications as well. When we talk about staffing or scheduling for daratumumab infusions, I always say start early. That would be the patient, particularly on their first infusion, that you would probably want to bring in fairly early in the day. We want to get them ready with their pre-meds, ensure that they're taking their pre-meds at home as well. We want to make sure that we start our infusion slowly and then we'll slowly increase that according to the prescribing information for the particular monoclonal antibody that we have. And of course, if there are any infusion reactions, we're going to slow that down and appropriately manage that. So the infusion could take a little bit longer. So we always say start early. So elotuzumab dosing at the start is weekly for two cycles, so eight doses, which is the same as daratumumab. How it's different and changes then is that elotuzumab then goes to every other week, so days one and 15, and it stays on that schedule, where daratumumab goes to every other week for eight more cycle, eight more doses, I'm sorry, two cycles, and then it goes to once a month dosing. So that's the difference in those two antibodies. Another difference to consider with daratumumab is it can impact blood typing. So we want to send a type and screen on all patients prior to their first dose of daratumumab. We also give them a card to carry in their wallet that says that they're on this antibody. In case they're at another center and they have a type and screen needing a transfusion because they're going to have these antibodies that show up in the type and screen and impact the indirect Coombs test. So these patients, this will show up in their blood for about six months after they receive daratumumab. So it's really important, especially if they're transfusion dependent, that the blood bank knows that they've been on this antibody. An infusion reaction is every chemotherapy nurse's nightmare. We don't want to see this happen. But chemotherapy nurses are very very prepared to take care of an infusion reaction. Now this isn't an anaphylactic reaction and it's really important to differentiate between an infusion reaction and an anaphylactic reaction. An anaphylactic reaction is mediated by IgG. It's a true allergic reaction. It generally happens with subsequent infusions, usually not the first. Um, it is something that you stop the drug and you don't repeat the drug again. So it's a different mechanism of action from an infusion reaction, which we can also call a cytokine release reaction. This is when you have an effective tumor therapy, and it happens within, oh, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, hour and a half into the infusion as versus an anaphylaxis, which may happen early on in an infusion. An infusion reaction usually is with only the first infusion because your tumor burden, burden is greater.
So you're having a reaction because of the release of cytokines into the system because we are working on that cancer. The cancer cells are being destroyed. So when we have that process going on, then the body reacts perhaps with fever, with rigors, and it does look like an anaphylactic reaction. So we either have to slow that infusion right down, we have to stop it and appropriately manage it. The difference too between that and an anaphylactic reaction is we can re-challenge that patient after an infusion reaction. We would bring them back to a slower rate than what they were getting when the infusion reaction occurred. Uh, we'll treat them with whatever medications their facility uh, recommends for treatment of an infusion reaction, maybe more steroids, something like that, Benadryl, uh, whatever the protocol is, and then we'll restart that infusion and slowly work our way up again. So the range of symptoms that we look out for mainly when we're administering patients with monoclonal antibodies are infusion related reactions. So different monoclonal antibodies will have the different ranges, whether it's mild to severe um, you know, toxicities when administering the drug. A mild reaction can be a patient having fevers or chills, maybe have a cough or some wheezing or hypotension. And so this is what we look at, at as a mild reaction. They can go to very severe reactions to a grade four, where patients can have issues with bronchospasm, pulmonary edema, hypoxia, dyspnea, um, hypo or hypertension. Um, these can be very severe reactions that um, need you know, immediate medical intervention. Certainly, I will tell you that all patients receiving monoclonal antibodies uh, are required to have pre and post hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity medications. And if a hypersensitivity uh, reaction does occur in, while the patient is getting the air infusion, then we re-administer um, you know, pre-medications. But in most centers, we'll have their own protocol um, regarding you know, what therapies they want to give a patient 24 to 48 hours prior to the infusion and on the day of infusion and 24 to 48 hours after the infusion. Patients who receive monoclonal antibodies can have a reaction you know, two days after receiving their, their, um, their monoclonal antibody.